road here. Hot weather continues. Anyway, um, the sand burst. Yeah. So I'm just going to give a little bit of a forward here first before we actually get into the content. Um, when you're talking about assemblers that um, take some written text and convert it into something that the processor can use, then um, there are, I wouldn't say lots, but there are quite a, a few assemblers that can do that. And all of them use a somewhat, well not all of them, but there are differences between them in terms of how they, what keywords they use, the actual syntax that is used to describe, um, to use those keywords in combination with parameters. Um, <coughs> you can have a little bit of different syntax, like in exactly what order things need to be put in. Uh, some have also layout requirements, so white spaces are important, and where you put certain things is in, in, in terms of the positioning in the, in the text file is, is important. And um, also, directives can be different, so there are sp directives specific to the um, compiler in question, the assembler in question. Uh, so basically, if you um, do find some code on the internet, which is um, reported to be for the Amiga, uh, then you really need to also know the, uh, it would be very useful to know the assembler product that um, and version uh, that can compile the code. <coughs> because even within the same product or uh, the same assembler tool, you can have different, uh, depending on what version you have of the tool, you can uh, handle different things. Uh, uh, one of the most annoying things is the uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, well, uh, in my experience, quite a few assembler snippets which are thrown on the internet. Um, they uh, refer to uh, assembler specific resource files. So if you don't have that specific assembler, that specific version with the extra files, then you actually have no hope of um, compiling any. But I would like to just in this video to actually give you a, a few examples that you could actually get um, working. <laughs> without going crazy and maybe you can like build on that you, know, you can get some experience from this and then build on it. but I mean you have been warned that uh, launching into assembler can be not only the issue of learning to write assembly code that actually does something it's the, the whole environment around um, um, running assemblers uh, to produce code that the processor will actually execute and on a specific Amiga operating system. But um, let's not despair. I'm going to give you a few concrete examples and then, uh, as I said, you can take it from there. So let's get started. So, a little bit of history first. And um, yeah, you can argue one way or the other, but if, if you're looking for what was the base reference for a um, Amiga specific assembler, toolkit then um, basically it was this created by Highsoft systems and um, this company was active when the Amiga was alive and then um, the, as I understood this person um, uh, liquidated most of his resources from the company when, when Commodore and stuff went, went busted so his resources went to another and then he started a cafe restaurant <laughs> restaurant business or something like that but, um, uh, yeah, it, it's actually the history of the Amiga that sadly yeah, some, some people and organizations got um, trashed because of the when Commodore made such bad business, business decisions and disappeared. But um, the thing that we're interested in is that the, the, the many of the um, assembler codes programs were, were actually made, so that they were either made with Debpack or made to be compiled with Debpack. I'm not to say that there are, weren't others and that there were other sources, as I have previously explained, but um, Debpack was considered one of the more primary. So if we look here, um, so and, and he made a lot of other products for other computers that are long 
been dead before the Amiga came out. But um, their most well-known product was the, yeah, here as you see, the DevFact Assembler, um, integrated development environment. And um, you could also uh, make code for the Atari ST. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at this, and then um, move on uh, from this and see what migration path you can take. Uh, theoretically speaking, this is a commercial product. Uh, as, as far as I can identify, it's never been released as a so as uh, as uh, GPL implementation. So um, on the other hand, you can't buy this product even if the um, Highsoft company exists. Uh, if you visit their website, they're into web page design and it hasn't been updated for many, many years. So. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put the links to, to Highsoft uh, uh, in the comments. So maybe if you, if you download this from somewhere, then um, you could go to his web page and see if you want to buy some web design service pay for the software. But, but the, the reason we're gonna actually going to look at this is not really to use it, it's, it's to show you that, uh, that this is what it was like in the day. And then how do you move on from this, but still being able to um, compile the DevPack um, syntax. So, let's move on. So, what I'm going to um, demonstrate is the usage of DevPack 3, and, and there are yeah, different versions of DevPack uh, that are available. But um, I'm going to take DevPack 3, and then the 1.3 is the Amiga OS. So I'm going to actually demonstrate this one here. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to boot the um, my Amiga emulator with um, using this as the boot disk. So this is a bootable disk, uh, so you can get directly into the DevPack um, development environment, which is actually quite convenient. So, uh, so I'll, I'll put this uh, list in the comments. I, I will not be providing any uh, links to where you can actually download it from, or, or I will not e either be providing any files. But um, it's it's not that difficult to find this this version or other versions that are very close. But I mean, let's get this booted up and um, see what it looks like. I'm using Amiga Forever, and that is just a f uh, Amiga 500 instance where I've increased the amount of memory available because uh, you can't do this if you don't. So I think I made it, was it 512 kilos? Yeah, so I increased, I put, well, I added one megabit um, of memory for this to work. So, anyway, I, I, I cut part of the um, booting, so it took actually longer. So I'm ru I actually running the uh, emulator at um, stock speed. So, And um, just as a hint, you can actually go in and you can uh, make, make the emulator super fast by uh, keeping it um, standard. So, here we have the dev pack. So, after you boot it, then you can... Um, let's see... Oh, well, that seems to work. Uh, and the mouse is a little bit. And um, then we just go back to the pack. And samples. And here we have the Hello World. So I'm going to demonstrate this through Hello World. So so in, in this environment, when you boot it up, you actually have a fully operational dev pack environment where all the include files are accessible and everything you need to do on OS 1.3 um, assembler. And then here we see the actual assembler. And um, my previous comments apply. So this is um, this assembler style, syntax, layout, and everything is, is um, to a certain extent dev pack um, specific. And then because it, 
I've actually started from a clean boot, so the, uh, it's on, uh, the assembly that I made previously for testing doesn't exist. Um, so assemble. Um, and of course it takes a while. <laughs> it's running it's talk speed, so it gives you a kind of a feeling like, you know. But you see, it's it's able to um, compile the hello world. So that's a nice test. And then one can say program run. And then here you have a simple hello world. So I, this is my first level of like building a little bit more confidence that, uh, that it's possible to get anything at all. Work, I mean, working from source. So if you have this dev pack environment, you can very easily work on. Um, Actually, people in the day they worked on rather large applications using Debpack, but um, you can um, at least get a yeah, get a hello world example. Work. Um, so, oh, so anyway, uh, we will move on to the next stage. So, um, landing on planet Earth again. Um, actually going to show you the next most pop I would argue the next most popular assembler solution in the modern day and um, that's called Vasm and I'll put all the links in the in the description for this but um, this this is the platform I'll demonstrate next and um, it has a lot of different binaries and if you're the first time you come here it's like what in the world what, which one do i need to download but they actually do have some more of a, a, a logic so if we if we're looking at 68k then they have actually um two different um, variants um so the way it works is that you have the processor, uh, which is the 68K, um, and then they have the so-called syntax module. They call them syntax modules. So, and that, that's what covers the description when I said that there are different types of assemblers that have different keywords for layouts and all this stuff. So the, these syntax modules will handle it. Uh, so you have two. You have the standard and then the Motorola. Uh, I think this is... For Motorola. I'm, I'm not sure that's the correct abbreviation. And then it's Win64 is the actual that uh, you can run it on uh, yeah, Windows 11 and Windows 10 and stuff 64 bit. So you, you actually you need this one here. And uh, as I said, I'll put the uh, um, uh, I'll be writing a bit of comments <laughs> so you don't have to remember this. But anyway, my idea is that we're just going to sh show you very briefly. Um, um, how this is used. So <coughs> you get the zip file, the one I indicated, and then you extract it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting everything in one one folder just to make it uh, as simple as possible. And then um, you also need to go and get the exact Hello World uh, source file from Debpack. And if you stay until the end of the video, I'll show you how to do file transfer from. Uh, the ADF file uh, into Windows, um, and then also you need um, the supporting incl uh, assembler include files, um, and the only one, the ones that I've select uh, copied over are only the ones that are absolutely needed to compile this one. So I haven't I haven't copied the full. Thing. Uh, these um, assembler include files. If you watch one of my previous videos, they're actually part of the Amiga developer developer kit so that it's actually not um, specific to dev packs so you know, they they can be <laughs> considered public domain even though know, actually theoretically speaking Amica is not um, um, GPL code but um, the, the these are fully uh, freely accessible the assembler include files so you are, are allowed to link and compile against them um, you know, Amiga source file resources without Break any license, especially if you uh, if you have a workbench. Yeah, probably connected to workbench licensing, so as long as you have yeah, an Amiga piece of equipment and 
or a otherwise licensed workbench than you cover. Um, yeah, so the assembler source file the required includes, and then the I just put the assembler in here. So anyway, let's get it compiled. So then you need this command line. And um, as you see now you you get the dev pack. So this actually this assembler has the option to say that we're trying to compile um, assembler files that are uh, targeting the dev pack on the development environment. And F hunk X is the output format for the executable. And then you need to add this extra kick one hunks if you have a like 1.x series workbench. And then um, it says that the output file is hello world and then the input file is yes file. So that's uh, so, so it seems to execute okay and then of course does it work? So I had to save time I didn't record the boot up but I've loaded now with a standard 1.3 workbench so um, this is not the dev pack, dev pack boot disks so, let's see workbench And I've mapped the exact same directory that we were just looking at where we compiled the program so that you can actually see it directly in, um, in the Amiga session. So here we have all the, all the files. And um, what we're interested in to see is this hello world will it start. Yes, it did. Miracle has happened now. <laughs> Actually, sometimes when you're doing this Amiga programming, it, it's, um, uh, it's not always super easy to get things to work the way. Uh, there's lots of occasions where, uh, because it is sort of, it's it's from a bygone age when they didn't have neat things like memory protection and stuff. So even the slightest mistake or the slightest deviation and, and you'll get no information will it lock up or die or get a guru meditation but anyway now this is as you see this is the um uh, exact same hello world application the dev pack compiled the source code of it and um, this is created by the output binary output created by vasom and then um you can see it runs on a standard 1.3 um, workbench. So, just a few little facts. Um, of course, now I've just showed you how to compile one file and then immediately dump that into um, the executable for the Amiga. But it is possible to, um, to compile more than one file and then link them together. And, and then you just need the um, the tool called VLink. So I'll, I'll put a link, the link in the description to this small tutorial. So it's actually pretty simple stuff to uh, yeah, to do more than one file, at least in the, in the uh, yeah up to a reasonable amount. So, so um, of course, when you start to get into like more than ten files, I. I think that then, and you might want to consider some kind of a integrated development. <laughs> but um, until you hit that limit, then it's actually very nice to have everything just in, in one place, uh, under one structure. So it's easier to handle, especially if you if you're um, like I am, like continuously interrupted to go do other things. Then it's very hard to like come back and try and understand a very complicated um, development environment setup just to be able to do another level of hello world so I mean, this, this is a very 
very direct and very compact. So when it comes to documentation, um, Vasam has its own set of do online documents, but uh, DevPack actually does also have a manual. And, and since you have DevPack compatibility, then basically you can read the DevPack manual and do uh, programming in that style, and then you know Vasam handles the rest. So uh, yeah, so, so basically you can, except for the integrated development environment um, part of it, then you can you can do the same style of program. And um, there are lots of different, both on. This is this is interesting. This is an online um, online manual, uh, an online book. Sorry, about assembly program, which I thought was very good. It doesn't seem to be available as a, to download as a PDF, but um, and then of course there are other other mm -hmm. books available and, and articles and stuff if you just use um, just search the internet you'll, you'll find the word but I, but I thought this was kind of and this is of the right around the right, right correct time period also so uh, it's, it's um, yeah I thought it was useful yeah and then as I mentioned before if you're this is like a bonus um, insert if you if you want to know how you can transfer files from uh, Amiga disk image to um, file to windows so then you have this tool um, it's called ADS Corpus and um, it's uh, like you see uh, news from February 2003 so it's, uh, it's relatively ancient however the source code is available for anybody who would like to go in and make an updated version of this but this I have um, downloaded and it runs on my Windows 11. It's got a few quirks. When you start it, it complains about registry settings and that's normal because it hasn't been adapted to 64-bit um, windows. Um, and yeah, so let's actually have a look at the program itself. So anyway, here's the actual program and um, if you're wondering how I actually got uh, the include files uh, the assembler include files off the dev pack disk. So here I've opened the um, uh, dev pack image so you can see all the direct files and directories and then on the other side I've opened the directory that we were currently working in. So for example uh, if we look at for example devices as you see I only pulled over or copied two files and they're in here in the include directory let's use the devices in so, so let's take for example audio here so I don't have audio now and when you right click there's no copy <laughs> so that's a bit of a janky interface so you know and then you have to use um, folder up to go up the structure and the folder structure and then if you want to move copy this file then you, you actually drag and drop it so it, it doesn't actually move it when you, um, when you do that. So, uh, but anyway, that's that's the way you can. And this this of course this is a good tool. This will work with any you know, Amiga ADF um, image. So um, that's a, it's a great way. I personally haven't tried to transfer files in the other direction, but uh, I, I think that actually works. So uh, this is a, this tool. Uh, yeah. What else can I say? Yeah, a bit, bit of a janky interface, but I, uh, I haven't had it crash at all, so I was able to do the um, do these small file transfers without any problem. So if you, yeah, if you find it useful, as I said, you, know, you get a registry error message when you start it on Windows 11, but it doesn't seem it doesn't disturb the functionality. Anyway, that was the summary about um, assembler programming on the Amiga just to get started with something so the one doesn't give up and go cry in a corner. <laughs> I think it's important to get started, you know, that you, you can actually see that you can succeed with something. And then I think it was important to show dev pack because that that's kind of represents what it was like in those days and then a little bit of comments about this 
you know, why, why things, if you, if you pick up examples from here and there and then you find out they don't work, you can't compile them and, and, and all the things have, then you understand a little bit more of the why. What's the history behind this, that it's, it was very far from standardized and, and that there were like mainstream packages that were used with the, their own formats and, uh, and stuff and then there were a little bit esoteric implementations that used their own so on. Yeah, but um, what can I say? Happy hacking. And um, see you in the next one.